A father of two takes his puppy for a walk at his holiday home at Lewis Smith Lake, Alabama. When he steps onto the patio, he suddenly feels a sharp strike. He looks down to see a copperhead snake curled up on the snow. In a rare reaction to one of North America's least venomous snakes, minutes later, he's lying unconscious on the floor. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. The long holiday weekend in May was something Oliver Baker and his family were looking forward to. It was a chance to relax at their holiday home at Alabama's Lewis Smith Lake. They had also recently bought a puppy who joined them on their trip. Oliver worked in water quality control for the city of Northport in Alabama. He had grown up in the Birmingham area and remained relatively local ever since. At 52 years old, he was much loved by all who knew him. He always went out of his way to make people feel welcome or to help somebody in need. He was a role model for his two young sons. While the family was inside their Smith Lake house in Walker County, Oliver opened the back door and stepped outside onto the stone patio. Their holiday home looked out over Smith Lake, which is a reservoir and the largest lake in Alabama. It's also considered one of the cleanest lakes with a rich diversity of wildlife. Deer, fox, raccoons, groundhogs, and chipmunks all frequent the surrounding woodland, and so do copperhead snakes. The copperhead is common and widespread across eastern North America. It's a species of pit viper, a venomous snake that possess a pit organ, which allows the snakes to see in infrared. They can detect their prey in even the darkest of places. The heat radiated from the animal's body is a dead giveaway. Nothing they can do will stop the copperhead from sensing their whereabouts and homing in on their prey. Despite their venom and their infrared detecting abilities, copperheads are rarely dangerous to humans. The bites can be painful, but the venom is the least potent of all pit vipers, with a lethal dose being around 100 milligrams. It usually causes swelling at the site and intense throbbing and nausea, but is rarely fatal unless the person suffers an allergic reaction. They can control the amount of venom they inject at the time of a strike. Sometimes they don't inject any venom at all, known as a dry bite. These bites, as well as low dose bites, serve as a warning to potential threats. Oliver had decided to take their Labrador puppy for a walk on that Friday. The countryside surrounding their home was a perfect place to enjoy the fresh air and scenery. They had walked around the lakeside multiple times before, looking out over the water and seeing the many different bird species that frequented the lake. But as he stepped outside the back door, he failed to notice something coiled up on the patio. It was a copperhead, camouflaged against the stone. Oliver looked out over the lake, not watching where he was putting his feet. The puppy trotted over the patio and down toward the water. As Oliver followed the puppy, he suddenly felt something sharp strike him. He immediately jumped and looked down by his feet. He was shocked to see a copperhead lying on the hard stone patio. It had been soaking up the heat from the stone, keeping its body warm, keeping its body active. It had been drawn to the sunny patch from the surrounding woodland. The pain from the strike immediately began searing around the bite site. Oliver quickly rushed indoors and called out to his family. He instantly felt an intense burning sensation and an incredible throbbing that radiated throughout his body. The pain was indescribable. The copperhead had injected venom into his flesh and it was now surging through his body, working its way through his blood vessels to all his major organs and muscles. Every fiber in his body ached. He knew he needed help right away. Oliver's family came rushing to his aid. He told them that he had been bitten by a copperhead snake. He had identified it correctly, and one of his sons ran outside to the patio. There, still coiled up in the corner, was the coppery brown snake. It eyed Oliver's son, its head raised off its coils as its forked tongue flicked in and out of its mouth, smelling the air, sensing for danger. His son ran back inside and back to his father's side. Within a couple of minutes, Oliver was clutching his chest and having difficulty breathing. This was not a normal reaction. He was having a very severe reaction to the snake bite. His wife called the emergency services, and then Oliver collapsed on the floor of their home. He stopped breathing. Immediately, the family began CPR on him. 
Most people who are bitten by copperheads live to tell the tale. They aren't typically aggressive snakes and only strike people when they feel threatened and defensive. If somebody steps on or near them, then they are most likely to strike. Although nobody knows for sure, this is what likely happened to Oliver. Their bites are notoriously painful, and sometimes people can lose a finger or toe if that's where the snake has bitten them. If there are concerning symptoms, then it's always advised to seek medical attention. Anti-venom can be very costly in the U.S. if the victim doesn't have medical insurance. Incredibly, a single vial can cost upwards of $11,000, with a typical patient initially requiring between four and six vials. But around 50% of copperhead bites are dry or inject minimal venom, not requiring any medical treatment. But Oliver hadn't received a dry bite, and there wasn't any anti-venom on hand. It had been less than a few minutes since the bite, and Oliver had lost consciousness. He lay unresponsive on the floor while his family continued to breathe for him. Finally, the paramedics showed up, and his two young sons and wife watched on helplessly as he was driven away in an ambulance. He was rushed to a local school playing field where they waited for a helicopter to arrive. But Oliver wasn't considered stable enough to fly by chopper to University of Alabama at Birmingham Hospital. Instead, the ambulance drove him to a Jasper hospital where they fought to stabilize him. Finally, the decision was made to airlift him to Huntsville because there weren't any available beds at the hospital. He remained in critical condition over the weekend. It was touch and go whether he would make it. His family just had to hope and pray that he would pull through. But his organs began shutting down, and despite doctors' best efforts, he began losing the fight. In a tragic turn of events, he died in Huntsville Hospital three days later on Memorial Day. He never regained consciousness after the snake bite. Oliver's death was a huge shock for the family. What had begun as an enjoyable trip for the holiday weekend had ended in tragedy. Oliver had otherwise been fit and well, and copperhead bites aren't usually considered fatal. Tragically, Oliver had suffered an extreme allergic reaction to the snake venom. He had succumbed to the bite within minutes, his body shutting down after experiencing anaphylactic shock. Between seven and 8,000 people are bitten by snakes every year in the United States. Most of those are survivable with just five people dying from them. Although the copperhead is the snake that tends to bite the most people, around 95% of the snake bite fatalities in the U.S. are caused by rattlesnakes.